the big general thing that I've learned is like farming is by far the most complex and uh, deep field of inquiry that I have ever encountered. Like I've never met a profession where you've had to be confident in so many things. Farming is a hard, brutal process. And so you really have to love it. It has to feed your soul. And so it takes a unique person to want that. People who grow food need to realize that it's a long-term goal. Hopefully to restore the farm to actually a living, green ecosystem that basically is balanced. You know, ecosystems don't work on the short term. The thing about regenerative farming is it just, it takes a long time because you're working, you know, you're mimicking natural systems. It takes three years for that system to kick in. And in three years, I got the soil organic matter from 1.7% to over 3%. It took three years before you really started seeing it. It's like five years when things really start to like accelerate. And now in the 10th year of the farm, you know, I, I'm really seeing that uh, paying off in big ways. And we can keep more money in our pockets and economics is a lot of what really pushed us to, to, to take this step into regenerative farming. Over time, we have seen um, a benefit in yield and, and not having to increase our input costs for, for fertilizer or seed or um, chemicals or things like that. So not only it's reducing costs, um, but it's also increasing the quality of what we do. I think that the crops just are producing more. They are healthier looking. Every year we do see, see pastures being a little more productive and hay crops being a little more productive. We're, we've seen in a very short time that implementing regenerative practices have impacted the business in a positive direction. Because that's the biggest killer right now is there's no financial market to help them to make that transition. I feel like we've taken out the incentive to be a good steward of the land. So that goes a little bit to the um, farm bill and that you know, the current subsidies that we use disincentivize a regenerative practice. The subsidies that were going to the big scale farm, you know, those kinds of things are not helpful for farmers like us. You know, there's... Uh, subsidized conventional meat, and then there's unsubsidized regenerative meat, and they're on the same market. We're all about cheap food, and we're all about um, farmers being in debt every year. These farm bills have suppressed the true cost of food for so long. And so I, I think it, it does have to come down to policy. And believe me, farmers want to transition. They want to get out of this trap that they find themselves in that is degrading their land. How can we realign some of those um, subsidies and crop insurance um, regimes to support a movement towards systems that will ultimately make them more profitable? It is a huge risk to transition from any system to another. If the government could help that transition some... I just hope that someday healthy soils practices and regenerative practices are as economically viable as any other practice. You know, when you, you know, you're doing everything right. You're building soil, you're holding water, you're, you know, you're producing a tremendous product. So we calculate that we've improved productivity on our land through soil building practices by upwards of 400%. So that's pretty fantastic um, from an economic perspective. And that's, where we're coming from as ecological asset managers. Fires, uh, extreme temperatures, extreme drought, extreme rainfall events, extreme winds, like all of those things make farming really, really hard. I mean, farming is already really, really hard. Having really good soil is the ultimate insurance policy on dealing with craziness. We've had all kinds of adversity and I've still, despite it all, the land has still sort of given enough back that that I'm still here as a farmer saying that, that that's how I make my living. And um, to me, that in itself is a success. I do think that the solution lies in connectivity, lies in farmers regaining the sort of elevated status that they've historically enjoyed and then could certainly have again. I would just love to see more people think of agriculture as a legitimate career. And there is a huge need for more people to farm and ranch like this.
you can't have a diversity in the soil without having a diversity of people who work the land. I mean, to me, you can't. For us, it's a, it's like a movement almost. It's like, you know, if we make this work, we can be the example that a community that doesn't have much economically can pull together because in my mind, it takes a village to raise a farm.